the best recap. If you enjoy this recap, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. The best recap. Our story begins in 19th century England, an age of industry and magic. Humanity has developed by leaps and bounds. Did it end here? No. The economy developed, the population exploded, and numerous colonies were established. Some said, this was the golden age of mankind, and yet some places were alienated. This was the case with the mining town right here. This was a village which doesn't even have a proper name. It was a place where minerals came out, and it was a place where people at the bottom of the social pyramid gathered, and of course, at the bottom of them were the children. Most of the children here were orphans who had similar backgrounds. They didn't know who their father and mother were, and they were raised until the age of 14 by the government subsidies, after which they were sold to the mining village here in the name of employment and independence. It was illegal, but no one cared. Because this was very common here. Perhaps because of that, the appearance of the children all looked alike. A face that has turned black from mining, lifeless eyes, and a skinny body. It may be too much to say, but they were more like cogs or screws in human form rather than human beings. It was as if they were squeezed to the limit and were broken to the point, if they were to be squeezed a bit more then they'll get sick and die. Like the saying, nature provides an exception to every rule, even in this place there was a strange child. This child's name was Oliver. There was nothing special about him but still he was a little bizarre. No, it was more than that. Oliver, who was smaller and thinner than the other children, had pale skin. He was reminiscent of a living corpse, and he was an ugly child that no one would think of as strange if he died right away tomorrow. However, that was ironically the proof that Oliver was bizarre. It was three years and four months from now when Oliver got sold to this mine, at that time he was hated by the supervisor, so he couldn't get to eat properly, and was much more miserable than he is now. Seeing such a soggy child, all of them expected that he would die in less than three months, some even started betting on when he would die. In fact, Oliver fell ill less than a week after his arrival at the mine. His condition was so serious that he couldn't even breathe properly and his body boiled like a kettle. But to everyone's surprise, Oliver miraculously recovered when they were preparing to dig a place to bury him. Rather, the other children, who were fine until the day before, suddenly fell ill and died. And that wasn't the end. Oliver had many other oddities that cannot be properly explained. It was difficult to avoid the angry supervisor, but Oliver was strangely quick to notice the change and was able to avoid being the supervisor's target. Even if he was the target of harassment by bullying, he luckily escapes quickly, with the perpetrator dying of illness. In addition, the fierce guard dog watching over the children was especially scared in front of Oliver, and the rats disappeared one by one in the places wherever Oliver worked or slept. These strange phenomena overlapped, and resulted in Oliver being alienated, and treated as an ominous object by everyone. But Oliver, the concerned party, did not care about these at all. His interest wasn't to be friends with anyone or to be loved by anyone. Currently, Oliver only wanted to survive as long as he could in this mine. There was no clear purpose. It was just an obsession with life. He was similar to ants and mites who are all struggling to live. Oliver, who was raised in an orphanage and then sold to a mine, had nothing other than survival in his mind. However, his survival was greeted with a change one day due to a sudden visitor. At the time of work, there was the sound of an alarm that shouldn't have sounded. The children, who worked in the stuffy coal mine without a trace of sunlight, looked up with difficulty, and only Oliver, who was mining in the corner, was working without paying any attention. After a while, a fat man came down on the rusty ladder. It was the supervisor who supervised the children. Attention! Attention! Everyone! Gather outside right now! A black-faced child asked with a frightened look. Oh! Supervisor! What's going on? A visitor came in after a long time. They say he's looking for a sincere hard worker, so come out and greet him. Hurry! Hurry! Move! Come on! At the supervisor's words, a faint smile flashed across the faces of the children who had a dead expressions. Why? It's because if they got chosen, they could get out of this hell. It was a kind of a regular event. This was their only hope in this hopeless mine. The children stopped what they were doing and climbed up to the ground on a rusty ladder. The sound of the ladder rang, and there was a small commotion as everyone pushed each other in order to climb up first. Only Oliver got away from the commotion as he was watching them from below. He felt that there was no particular reason to rush like others. Whether it was his emotions that are dead or his soul that was broken, Oliver has never felt any emotions such as joy, expectation, or hope ever since he was born. That was why he was so calm, maybe it was thanks to this that he still survived. Because, for him, false hope was poison. The strong children were the first to climb above the ladder, and the rest of the weak children climbed the ladder following them. And of course, it was Oliver who came in last, so he got the worst seat in the last corner. Oh, it's dazzling. I think I'm going to live a little longer. Children who saw the sun after a long time chatted with excitement. Even the sunlight was a luxury in the coal mine. Meanwhile, a muscular man appeared in front of the children. 
He was the tyrant who was in charge of the mines in these fields. He had a cigarette in his mouth and was accompanied by his fierce guard dog, and he spoke in an arrogant manner. Shut up, everybody, be quiet. Don't make a fuss in front of the customer. The dog barked furiously. The children were frightened and united among themselves, only Oliver stood calmly. Then a man appeared quietly. Attention, everyone, this is the customer who came to visit us today. He needs sincere and talented workers. So everyone, be silent. The children closed their mouths as if they had made a promise not to open them and rolled their eyes to look at the man called a customer. The man was middle-aged, with a benevolent expression and a well-groomed moustache, and he seemed quite rich in his neat coat and heavy hat. This could be a good sign, a nice-looking, wealthy man who could take them anywhere better than here. But he looked a little different in Oliver's eyes. The supervisor spoke to the customer. Do you want me to recommend some children? The workers who usually behaved nicely to the supervisor smiled faintly. But the customer shook his head. No. I would like to pick one by myself. The customer then pulled something out of his coat. Surprisingly, it was chocolate. Chocolate. The children, who had been watching only chocolate wrappers all their lives, were excited. What is this? The customer spoke first. All the children tilted their heads. What is that? Does he think we don't even know what chocolate is because we work in the mines? I wondered what his intention was to ask such a question. Meanwhile, the boy who was a little faster raised his hand and said, It's chocolate. The child smiled slyly at the same time he gave the answer. He was sure to himself that this was a test to find an enterprising child who acts first, but his prediction went awry. Does anyone have any other opinions? The child who answered first the cold customer's question looked disappointed. But there was no sympathy from anyone. Rather, they raised their hand like animals in order to not miss this opportunity. Me. I know. Me. Me. I'll answer. Sir. Please me. Children shouted and raised their hands like a flock of pigeons gathering around the crumbs, except Oliver. Meanwhile, Oliver, instead of raising his hands, fell into deep thought. Is that really chocolate? Oliver looked at the customer's hand that was holding the chocolate. Obviously, he had the chocolate in his hand, but there was something more noticeable than that. It was a black light. It was a round black light that was formed at his fingertips. The customer was drawing black light from his body towards the fingertips and making a circle. This was quite a shock to Oliver. Each person had a black light on their bodies, but he has never seen any of them handle it like this before. While Oliver was shocked by the new discovery, the other children answered the questions, being pointed out by the customer. Okay, you answer. Yes, that's an opportunity. Wrong. The customer pointed to the other child. It's the future. A future where I can live a better life. Wrong. The guest pointed to another child again. It is a hope. Wrong. The customer pointed towards another child again. Then he pointed to another child. Each and every child he pointed out gave a novel answer, but nothing satisfied the customer. Before they knew it, all the hands were down, and the children whose hopes were trampled were only crying. They even shed tears because they felt it was so unfair, but fair or not, the customer only murmured in disappointment. Um, is there no one here either? It was at this moment that someone quietly raised his hand. Everyone's eyes focused on him. Huh? Ah, yeah. What does this look like to you? An unexpected question. Oliver, who was least visible, replied. A circle. Huh? What? A circle. Sir. A circle? Not a square? That's it for chapter 1. Like, if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you would like chapter 2. Leave a comment. What do you think of the story so far? Would you like the story to continue? Or hear similar stories? Thanks for watching. The best recap. Our story continues with our young protagonist, Oliver being brought out of the orphanage mine by the mysterious man, Joseph. If you enjoy these stories please like and subscribe, if you would like to hear more. A black mass that resembled clay and smoke revolved above Oliver's fingertips. At first, he could only make it into a round mass of light, but in less than half a day, he could transform it into triangles, squares, stars, donuts, and even human shapes. Above all, Oliver didn't get tired of it. He began to make the mass of black light change into more complex and sophisticated forms. The black smoke transformed into cones, mobius strips, and spider webs. Oliver was like a child who received a toy for the first time. Is it fun? Joseph, who was walking ahead of Oliver, suddenly asked. Yes. It can change into something like this. It's amazing. Oliver replied with pure admiration. Oliver looked gloomy because of his ugly impression and subdued voice, but the happiness on his face was sincere. Oliver didn't expect that the black light could be used like this. It was an amazing finding for Oliver. Is this black light called black magic? It's not a black light, it's called emotions. Emotions? Yeah. Anger, sadness, hatred. Dealing with these kinds of emotions is the fundamentals of black magic. 
It might not seem like a big deal, but it's a very powerful force. Emotions are a kind of energy that comes from the soul. It can be said that it is the same principle as the magic that comes out of magic stones. By the way, you are good at handling these emotions, but your emotions are not that strong. What? Just as you heard, your feelings are very small and humble. But, this kind of thing doesn't matter. Since you can use other people's emotions. That's the norm. At those words, Oliver's dynamic eyes lit up, like a corpse that had come back to life. It's not difficult. It's similar to how you can see others' emotions and deal with them now. Anyone can do it if they have enough talent. Think of it as similar to using your sixth sense, and invisible muscles that go beyond the ordinary senses. Oliver frowned at the complex words, but he instinctively realized one thing, that he had enough talent. Although there was no basis for it, he could be sure. At that moment, Oliver's hard brain creaked. He started to fall into his own imagination. Imagining himself handling a huge light rather than a small light like this. His cold heart started to warm up little by little when he thought of it. Oliver asked quietly, with eyes filled with desire. Can you teach me more? Black magic. Seeing his quiet but greedy eyes, Joseph pondered for a moment before answering. That's. I'll tell you more after we get home. The words, teach me now, came up to the end of Oliver's throat. It was a natural reaction because it was something that interested him for the first time in his life. However, as soon as he saw Joseph, he swallowed his words and decided to be patient. The reason for doing that was, the light emanating from Joseph's body. Oliver has always been able to see light around other people's body. A light that flickers when someone is angry, a light that waves when someone is sad and a light that trembles when someone is afraid. Oliver used the light to understand people's moods and used it to avoid getting caught in situations. Similarly, right now with the help of the light, he realized that if he doesn't listen to Joseph now, he won't get what he wants. He understood that Joseph wanted him to obey his orders. Noticing this, Oliver decided to use the tricks that had helped him to survive, to help him get what he wants. He pretended to be an obedient livestock, like the one Joseph wanted. Joseph smiled a little and walked along the road as if he liked the attitude of Oliver. Oliver became a good boy and followed Joseph quietly. However, even at that moment, Oliver did not shake away his thoughts about black magic, no, he carved for it more. A considerable amount of time has passed since the last conversation. Joseph and Oliver did not speak a word. They just walked silently. For young people, walking on the road for a long time without getting in a car or train was an arduous task, but Oliver didn't really care. He wasn't bored since he was playing with the light from his emotions while walking. All he did was use his emotions to make more complex shapes at a much faster time while moving them from left to right. Oliver thought of things that could be done with his newfound toy. He thought of the possibility of changing it to adapt for a specific use, rather than simply making a shape. He thought of mine's pickaxe, the kitchen's cleaver. But Oliver didn't limit his imaginations to just that, he thought, perhaps it could be recreated into something newer through processing rather than some known shapes. Oliver didn't learn it from anyone, but his instincts told him that it was possible. Thus Oliver unwittingly developed his own understanding and imagination of black magic, like a flower bud that was about to unfold. At that moment Joseph's voice was heard. Good. How about the inn over there? Oliver, who had buried himself in his imaginary laboratory, suddenly regained his consciousness and returned to reality. He looked up at the sky and found that night had already come, and the sky was covered with dark curtains, while the streets and surrounding forests were filled with darkness. The only light that could be seen was from a lonely inn in the distance. Joseph turned to Oliver and said, Well, we are lucky to stumble upon an inn in such a remote place. Without hesitation, Joseph approached the inn. The distant yellow light calmed their hearts as they approached it. As they opened the door and entered, they were greeted with a warm welcome along with the fragrant smell of food. Oh welcome, sir. The innkeeper greeted Oliver and Joseph as if he was waiting for them. A large middle-aged man rubbed his hands with a flattering smile typical of a merchant. Thank you for coming, sir. Accommodation for how many? It's me and this little boy. Do you have a room for the night? Yes, yes. Of course, we have, sir. Come, come with me. The owner politely bowed his head and led them to the room. On the way, they saw a dining hall, where there were about three to four other customers besides Joseph and Oliver. Doesn't the food look delicious? Looking at the food on the guest tables, Joseph said. In fact, the meals the guests were eating looked quite delicious, freshly baked bread, stew, cheese, and steamed meat. It was rare for such a secluded inn to have delicious meals like steamed meat. The owner smiled and replied. Thank you for the compliment, sir. It's kind of a sales strategy. As you can see, it is a remote inn, so it is difficult to receive guests. We can only deal with the occasional passerby or truck drivers. So we are increasing the number of customers by making the food delicious. Right. It sure looks delicious. It looks like a work of a master chef. Thank you, sir. It's all my wife's work. Including the staff, this inn is run by a total of five people. 
Of course, you will eat, right sir? Of course, we should eat. But can we eat in the room? I want to eat quietly. I will give you more money. At that moment, the inn owner's facial muscles twitched slightly. Ah, yes, yes, of course, it is possible. Here, this is the room, sir. Please wait a moment and I will bring you the meal. Is there anything else you need? No. Okay sir, then have a nice day. The owner hurriedly went down to the first floor, while Joseph entered the room with Oliver. Joseph asked Oliver as he took off his coat. What do you think of the owner? Isn't he kind? Ah, I don't know, but he was strange. Ha ha ha, isn't he? Joseph laughed. The owner did seem like a good innkeeper, but somehow his main job seemed a little different. About twenty minutes later, there was a knock on the door. A tall man who appears to be an employee brought food on a tray. I brought the food, sir. Oh, Joseph exclaimed at the delicious food such as stews and steamed meat along with freshly baked bread. Joseph handed the clerk a generous tip, and the clerk grinned. I would appreciate it if you could just put the empty bowl outside the door after you finish eating. If you need anything, please let me know sir. As the employee went outside, Oliver and Joseph looked into each other's eyes. An hour later, an empty bowl and plate were placed outside the door, and the owner, who saw it, put an evil smile on his face. At midnight, a dull sound rang out. It was the sound of hitting meat with a hammer, a human meat. Ha! Huh. The inn owner sighed and wiped the sweat from his forehead. No, it wasn't sweat, it was blood. At his feet lay an inn guest. It couldn't be seen properly because of the darkness, but the guest had been hit in the head with a hammer several times. Ah, I'm too old for this sh asterisk t. Ah, what do you mean, master? You can continue this for twenty more years. Arthur, Arthur, how old do you think I will be in twenty years? At that age, I want to live a more dignified life. By the way, is this the end? Ah, no, there's the last thing in the room at the end of the hallway. The man and a child. Oh, right, those who ate in the room. Phew, we're in luck today, shall I try harder? Won't they be awake? No. Don't worry. The food has been eaten thoroughly. It was like they cleaned the plates by licking with their tongues. Ah, that's good. The atmosphere was weird, so I was worried about it. Yeah, the kid. In particular, he looked like a walking corpse. What are those two? He doesn't look like a rich man, did he? Well, looking at the soot on the boy's body, he must have been a boy from a nearby coal mine. Slave traders, perverts who like children, and people who need lab rats occasionally visit those kinds of places. Wow. That's a bad thing. The innkeeper and his subordinate stood in front of the room where Joseph and Oliver were staying. The two waited for a while at the door, as usual. They made eye contact with each other and spoke softly. 1. The subordinate nodded his head. 2. Once again he nodded. 3. As they were about to open the door and go inside, the door suddenly broke and something poured out. It was like a marvel, and it was so fast that the subordinate got startled and sat down. When he belatedly opened his eyes, all he could see were the shards of the broken door and the owner lying down covered in shards. The owner was lying bleeding through his torso as if he had been shot. What nonsense is this? The subordinate's heart was pounding like a drum, while he felt suffocating. Soon, with the sound of loud footsteps, someone walked out of the room. It was the guest who came to the inn along with the child. He looked down at the subordinate and said, 1. That's it for chapter 2. Like, if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you would like chapter 3. Leave a comment. What do you think of the story so far? Would you like the story to continue? The best recap. If you enjoy these stories, please like and subscribe for more great stories like this. The best recap. Our story begins with our protagonist, Oliver accompanying a mysterious man, Joseph on a journey to an unknown location. Our story begins a few hours ago. Oliver and Joseph looked at each other with a table filled with delicacies between them. Do you think we should eat this food? Oliver thought for a moment and then shook his head. No. Why? That. It's a little difficult to explain. Then explain it the difficult way. Ah. Well. The light around the person who brought us the food was weird. Light? Yes. I mean, the emotion. When angry, it flickers, and when sad, it wavers and it trembles when afraid. So, that man? The innkeeper? Yes. The light around the innkeeper. It's faintly twisted. What if it's twisted? I don't know. I've only seen it a few times. The supervisor of the mine had that kind of a light right before he took me to the mine and when he put me into a dangerous job. You mean that kind of light is when people tell a lie? Ah, yes, I think so. At Oliver's reply, Joseph nodded as if he was satisfied with his answer. Why did the innkeeper lie to us? I don't know. The reason is obvious. It's because they had a purpose. For example, this delicious food is mixed with sleeping pills. Then, after eating and sleeping, they will kill us to get our things. 
It wasn't a pleasant story, but Joseph seemed to be a little excited as if he was reminiscing his childhood memories. Well, then, what should we do? Ah, we don't eat. That's not the right answer. If you do that then the innkeeper will realize that we've noticed. Rather, we should pretend we've been tricked and be vigilant. Remember, tricks are important to be a warlock. Oliver nodded his head with wide eyes as usual. Joseph wondered if Oliver understood what he said, but he didn't talk further. Instead, he pulled out a test tube from his chest pocket. Oliver's eyes lit up slightly when he saw the test tube. The test tube, sealed with a black stopper, contained a black liquid, as thick as tar, and it could be seen wriggling like a living creature. Is the black thing emotions? Oliver asked. Quote ellipsis ellipsis. Yeah, that's right. They are condensed emotions. How did you do it? Oliver's eyes were tinged with greed. When Joseph saw his greed, he warned him. Quote ellipsis dot. Don't be in such a hurry. It's not something you can learn yet. Instead, I'll show you something more interesting. Think you're lucky. With those words, Joseph pulled out the stopper from the test tube, and as soon as the stopper opened, the liquid shook more violently, and Joseph placed his hand on it. When the hand is removed from the test tube, the liquid became silent, and a strand of thread was pulled out. Its appearance was reminiscent of a thread from a spinning machine, and as soon as the thread was pulled out, it started to change back to black light again and circled around Joseph's hand. From liquid to thread and then to light. Oliver watched the amazing and mysterious sight without saying a word. No. He was doing more than just watching. From the moment Joseph opened the lid, the world seemed to have slowed down for Oliver, he instinctively understood everything, including the principles, mechanisms, and even tricks. This was the moment when the theory that he had built in his imagination was proved to be true. Black light, emotion could be changed according to one's purpose and could be processed into something new. Come out, eater, Joseph whispered towards the black light. Hearing his whisper the black light began to sway and spun around, as it united into one, and then began to expand. This is... Oliver said while looking at the sphere in the air. It was the size of a human head, and Oliver reached out his hand towards the sphere out of curiosity before he knew it. It was similar to a child extending his hand the first time he saw a fire. Just before Oliver's hand touched the sphere, one side of the sphere opened. And between the crevices appeared a huge, shaggy tongue and white teeth. A gigantic mouth appeared in the air. Eater. A scavenge hunter I created. It wasn't originally intended for this, but it can be used like this too. Eat all the food. At Joseph's words, Eater began to devour the food placed on the table, licking and cleaning the plates completely, but Oliver was rather amazed at how it looked. Black magic, it is really fun. Are you curious? Quote ellipsis dot. Yes. Well then, stay awake tonight. Maybe, you will see something even more interesting. And it was true. 1. Joseph said while walking out of the door, and the frightened innkeeper screaming stupidly, got up and started running away. 2. Joseph didn't care and took the thread again from the test tube. When the thread turned back to light, the light condensed in an instant and turned into a bullet-like shape. All this happened in just a second or two, and Joseph while pointing his finger at the employee said, 3. Hate bullet. The ball of light flew at the chant and pierced the back of the employee. The force was so powerful that a hole the size of marble was created on his head, and the employee fell down and died even before he could scream. Oliver followed Joseph and went down with him. For safety, he should have stayed in the room, but his curiosity and lust to learn about black magic made it impossible. He wanted to watch it through to the end. He felt like it was his mission. Well, this is not surprising. Joseph saw something and murmured. Oliver looked over Joseph's shoulder from the first floor of the inn. What caught his eyes was a naked guest. No, it was a corpse of the guest and a middle-aged woman carrying that body. The fat woman innkeeper looked at Joseph and Oliver with a puzzled expression on her face. Huh? Huh? Didn't you finish your dinner? I'm a little cautious so I don't eat anything suspicious. After speaking, Joseph responded like a gentleman to the woman, and he stretched out his hand. Hate bullet. The bullet of hate that flew pierced the middle-aged woman's head and chest at once. One of the waitresses, who was mopping and wiping out bloodstains next to her, was terrified and ran into the kitchen. Joseph walked leisurely and followed her, and Oliver followed Joseph, keeping a reasonable distance. It was so much fun for Oliver, who never thought black magic can use emotions like bullets. It felt like a dream come true. It was very interesting and terrifying at the same time, as Joseph was on his way to the kitchen, the employee who ran away came out. She came out with a shotgun that was usually used at the inn and pointed it at Joseph. Oliver thought at that moment. Is it possible to spread the emotion out wide and block it like a shield? As if he had known from the beginning an image was drawn in his head and to his surprise, Joseph created a curtain larger than the human height using the black light as Oliver had imagined. D. The waitress opened fire aiming at Joseph. Black shield. A loud gunshot rang out. 
However, all the bullets from the shotgun were blocked by a wide black curtain. The bullets fired from close range were blocked so futilely, and the waitress looked at that with her eyes wide open as if she was possessed by a ghost, but that was a fatal mistake. Hate bullet. Joseph fired bullets of hatred with no mercy. With a sound, the employee with holes in her chest and stomach collapsed. Beautiful. From strange creatures to bullets and shields, everything Oliver thought and didn't think, filled his eyes. Knowing how to treat customers properly is the first virtue of a waitress. Well, it's already too late for you. Joseph muttered as he approached the fallen corpse, and then muttered as if he had remembered it too late. Didn't the inn owner say there were five? Saying those words, Oliver turned his head to the basement without knowing it. At that moment, his eyes met with the last employee who was coming out of the basement. He was sweaty as if he had moved a heavy load. As soon as he saw the dead waitress, his face distorted and he rushed in. You beastards! He was more frightening than the supervisor of the coal mine, the butcher's knife in his hand was so sharp, as if it could cut anything with a small touch, and above all, the light emanating from his body was flickering more severely than anyone Oliver had ever seen before. Oliver was sure that he would die if he got caught. But, Oliver wasn't afraid, rather he felt the opposite, happy. Oliver stretched out his hand. It wasn't taught by anyone, but he instinctively reached out. Then he extracted the emotions of the angry employee swirling around him toward his hand. The black light moving around Oliver's hand was huge, and it was difficult to even for Oliver to explain how he did it. It was like walking for human beings, which is not taught but done instinctively. It was the realm of talent that Joseph talked about. Oliver's cold heart started beating and all his nerves were focused on his hand. The inn employee was almost a few steps away. But Oliver was neither afraid nor nervous. He only cared about the emotions in his hands. Oliver painted the image in his head. Like Joseph, he condensed the fluctuating emotions fastly and more precisely. As time passed slowly the fiery emotions found stability in Oliver's hand and they took the form that he had imagined. Oliver made his hand into the shape of a gun while stretching the thumb finger and index finger. A bullet of hatred was formed at the tip of his index finger. After that, he left everything to his instincts and took aim. Hate bullet. The bullets of hatred from his fingertips flew at the chant and pierced the chest of the employee. A fist-sized hole was created with the sound of a pop, and the employee died with his eyes wide open. The silence was the only thing that filled the inn. Oliver stared intently at his hand. He recalled the feeling of using black magic for the first time, and the feeling still lingered. Soon a hand touched Oliver's head. It was Joseph. He gently stroked Oliver's head with a very admirable expression on his face. Good job. Oliver followed Joseph down to the basement. In the basement, there were piles of stolen items taken from the murdered guests. Expensive coats, pants, and shoes. In addition, various watches, wallets, belts, and wedding rings were packed in the box. Ha ha ha. They worked really hard. Joseph pulled a pouch out of his pocket. The yellowish leather pouch had tooth-like zippers. It was like a little creature, which was a bit unpleasant. Take everything. At Joseph's words, clumsy hands and feet sprouted from the pouch and they began to devour the stolen belongings. After confirming that the pouch was collecting the belongings, Joseph approached Oliver and spoke to him. What are you looking at? Ah, uh, just. Why do you want to collect this? Oliver said, looking at the packed corpses and piles of blood packs. Rather than fear, there was only pure curiosity. To sell on the black market. There's nothing that can't be bought, and there's nothing that can't be sold. You may be able to use it in the future. Me? Yeah. Warlocks inevitably use the black market. Do you want to be a warlock? Oliver nodded his head. Oliver wanted to be a warlock, it was fun and weird for Oliver. Joseph placed his hand on Oliver's head once again. It was a very friendly gesture. Why do you think I bought you? Oliver didn't answer. He heard a lot of interesting stories about how to use emotions and what black magic was, but he didn't know why Joseph bought him. It was natural because he had no interest. My goal is to train excellent warlocks. That's why I'm gathering talented kids. Me. Talented? Yes. So, do you know why my goal is to train warlocks? Oliver shook his head. For their survival. If you live as a warlock, you will naturally face the world's persecutions and threats. The only way to survive is to become stronger and I'm nurturing those talents to be strong so that they can face the world. Oliver didn't quite understand, but he just nodded his head. But nurturing talents is not easy. It's hard to find talented kids, and there's no such thing as a cleric, paladin, or mage education system. I have to bear all the effort and expenses required for education. Do you know how difficult this is? Oliver nodded mechanically and Joseph continued. And nothing is free in this world. Everything, whether it's a kind act or an evil act, all done with compensation in mind. I don't have any money. I don't need money. All I need is loyalty. Loyalty to your teacher and your master. Oliver saw the light around Joseph. The pulsing light in Joseph's body was desire. Oliver, understanding the meaning of the light, immediately bowed his head. 
I will obey the master. The best recap. Our story continues. Oliver and Joseph have left the inn, having survived an assassination attempt last night. If you enjoy this story, please like and subscribe for more videos like these. Oliver stayed awake all night. After leaving the inn, Oliver spent every night without an ounce of sleep. Even though he was tired because of the long journey, he couldn't sleep. It was not because Oliver was physically or mentally strained, rather the opposite, he was excited. During his days in the orphanage and mine, every day was just the same. He could fall asleep at any time because he was not interested in anything other than survival, but the past few days were different. Every day was exciting. He thought of it several times a day, no, dozens or hundreds of times, about the time, when he extracted the emotions from the inn employee and shot him with hate bullet. The mysterious and yet familiar sensation made him feel like he was flying in the sky with wings. Recalling those memories not only made Oliver excited but also at the same time feel bad. Oliver felt that if he had concentrated a little more at that time, he could have extracted much more emotions at a much faster speed. He felt if he had restrained his joy and concentrated a little more, he could have shot several shots at the same time, not one. He regretted that he could have cast advanced black magic rather than imitating what Joseph did. Oliver reflected on each of those regrets. And he did image training in his head to relieve that disappointment. He extracts more emotions, shoots more hate bullets, and increases the speed, accuracy, and power. In time, he also gave a unique shape to the hate bullet. Even though it was just an imagination in his head, Oliver had the confidence to apply it in reality. If it had not been for the words of Joseph, his master, and teacher, he would have extracted his emotions and experimented with them right away. Don't practice black magic without my permission. Why? Master? Unlike the shapes created using emotions which can't be seen by people, black magic spells could be seen. We'll be arriving at our destination soon and I don't want you to attract useless attention. Above everything, a true warlock would never use his own emotions for black magic. Emotions are limited resources, and if you use them recklessly, your soul will become empty, so unless you are really out of options, you should avoid using your emotions. Then, can I practice if I extract it from someone? No. You should never use black magic without my permission. Did you forget what I told you at the inn? You should obey and follow me without asking questions. Then I will teach you. Because of those words, Oliver had no choice but to practice black magic only in his head. It was frustrating, but he couldn't help it. Joseph demanded obedience, so he had to obey as much as he could in order to receive his teaching, even if it was just on the surface. Before he knew it, the dark sky turned grey and gradually turned blue. The sun rose again, and Joseph also rose up from his seat. Hmm, sleeping in the streets isn't that bad. Huh, did you wake up early? No, you didn't sleep, right? Joseph said, looking at Oliver with a pale complexion and increased dark circles around his eyes. As usual, Joseph went to a nearby stream to wash his face and washed his mouth with an oral cleanser. Joseph said after spitting out a thick sputum-like cleanser, Do you usually not sleep? Or are you not sleeping on purpose? Even if you get tired in the middle, I won't give you a piggyback ride. Oliver replied with a glance at Joseph. I'm sorry, master. I couldn't sleep because I was excited when I heard that we were about to arrive at the destination. Oliver wasn't lying. Oliver couldn't wait to reach the destination and start learning black magic. It was a feeling he felt for the first time in his life, so he couldn't control it. Joseph said in a soft voice as if he didn't like such an appearance. Well, it's not that I don't understand. All the other kids were also like that. Other kids? What? Did you think you were the only one I've ever met who's talented? There are many other talented children besides you. Oliver saw the light around Joseph. The light staggered subtly. It meant what he was saying was half true and half lie. Of course, not all of them are talented. There are many other kids besides you. You know what to do if you're from an orphanage, right? I'll behave properly, master. Yeah, you're the youngest who just came in. You have to behave like a newcomer. Rank is really important in our society. Oliver nodded his head. It wasn't much different from the orphanage and mine. The weak or the newcomers had always made to do the hardest work and sleep in the worst position. In order to get out of such treatment, you have to be stronger than other children or have to be close with a strong child. So far, Oliver has been out of the spotlight by staying quiet because he wasn't interested in anything, but now Oliver doesn't know what he should do since there is something he is interested in. Joseph said warningly to such Oliver. Did you catch my point? Yes, master. I obey the master, and the rules of the place will be living. That's right. Follow the rules if you want to learn. Oliver nodded his head once again. After a while, Joseph and Oliver had a small loaf of bread for the meal and they started walking again. As they reached close to the destination, the number of trees gradually decreased, and the artificial smell peculiar to the city came out, and soon, a small city appeared down the hill. That's Wynum. Hearing Joseph's words, Oliver's eyes grew wider looking at the city. It was because of the number of people in the city and the various emotions they exuded. It's not a big city, 
but at the same time not a small city. How does it look? It looks lively, Oliver replied, looking at the gleam of irritation, anger, and resentment swirling around the people. Well, maybe. Some of the big factories that supported the city will be relocated to, Lunda. That's why everyone is emotionally unstable. Oliver didn't fully understand the meaning, but he understood that factories leaving was the cause of that fluctuating light. After finishing his words Joseph began to walk, while Oliver followed the suit and they soon reached a shabby factory built on the outskirts of the city. The building with the ceiling tilted to one side had a smiling pig and hanging sausage as a signboard. Is this, officially a small, unsightly sausage factory? Unofficially, it's our family base. Joseph went inside and Oliver followed. Shortly after entering the factory, Oliver saw the inside of the factory. There was a little bit of spoiled meat, a huge grinder, a cart carrying mince meat, and young workers working there. Even though they were young, they looked older than Oliver, all of them were in their mid to early twenties. As soon as Joseph appeared, they stopped what they were doing, approached Joseph, and bowed their heads. I greet the master. Welcome. Master. How was the journey master? The smell of spoiled meat and sweat emanated from their body, but they tried their best to look good in front of Joseph. As if familiar with the sight, Joseph pushed Oliver's back and spoke. This is the new kid I brought. He'll be a family member from today, so teach him the rules and everything about this place. The children smiled brightly at Joseph's words. They looked happy as if they got a new brother, at least on the outside. Yes, we will do it. Master. Upon hearing the answer, Joseph calmly left Oliver behind. Oliver didn't understand what was going on, and soon he was left alone in a strange place. No, Oliver wasn't alone, there were fiercely glaring workers around. They spoke with a frown like an angry dog. Quote ellipsis dot dot. What? Don't you understand what's going on? Go, get ready to work. Thus began Oliver's new life. In the morning, there was the sound of knocking on the crushed frying pan. The children, who were sleeping on a soggy mattress, woke up one by one to the painful metal sound. If there was anyone who was still sleeping without waking up, the children who played the role of supervisors screamed at them. What are you doing piece of sh asterisk t? Don't be lazy. Get up quickly. After hearing the scream, the children woke up in a hurry because they knew if they didn't soon a kick would follow, and the first to wake among them was Oliver. A week has passed since Oliver came here, and he was quickly adjusting to life here. It was one of his unique abilities, to adapt quickly wherever he was. In the morning, he came out of the warehouse called the accommodation and cleaned the inside of the factory. After he finished cleaning, he ate the bread and soup provided. It was an old hard bread, but it was a pretty good meal compared to the watery porridge he had in the mine. After the meal, he once again started working in the factory. For Oliver, this wasn't hard because it was a job where he had to just make sausage with the meat that came in that day. The smell of spoiled meat was bad, but it wasn't a big deal for Oliver, who had a dull sense of taste or smell, and it was easy compared to the heavy work he had to do in the mine where there wouldn't be any sunlight. The workload was also jagged from day to day, but it was basically small and had nothing to complain about. Rather it was the mind, not the body that was having a hard time. Obviously, Oliver expected that Joseph would teach him black magic as soon as he came to this place, but contrary to his expectations, Joseph just left after leaving Oliver here. Oliver wanted to ask what was going on, but he couldn't ask because of his experience in the orphanage and mine, and his desire to obey. Working was not a problem at all, but he wanted to know when he could learn black magic. Oliver wasn't confident about dealing with the disappointment in case he had to continue working in the factory without being able to learn black magic. It was then. A burning pain rushed into Oliver's face, as he stumbled backward. When the blurred vision became clear, there was a man standing in front of him, a ferocious young man with a masculine body. He said, thrusting his hand on Oliver's chest. This damn foo asterisk her, didn't I ask you to move all the meat? He was the supervisor in charge of the male workers. I, moo, veed it. Oliver replied with a dull pronunciation from the pain. Dissatisfied with the look on Oliver's face, the supervisor thrust his hand on Oliver one more time. This bugger. Hey, teach him a lesson. Even though I'll be leaving this place soon, I can't stand the thought of this sucker staying in the place where I once worked. It's not like we've got a shortage of workers. At the supervisor's words, the workers around, as well as the other fellow supervisors, nodded their heads. As if he liked the atmosphere, the energetic supervisor said, grabbing Oliver by the collar. Hey, little sh asterisk t. I warn you if you want to stay here as a worker, get your act together. It's no use pretending to be a fool. If I catch you doing something weird, I'll put you in the grinder and make you mince meat. Did you get it? Oliver nodded his head from his experience of becoming submissive whenever someone gets angry at him. The supervisor's face got further distorted by contempt. Ha! Huh, you moron! Clean up all the mess here today as punishment. Oliver nodded again. Only then did the supervisor let go of Oliver's collar. At that moment another supervisor intervened. It was a woman with pale skin and short purple hair. Hey, you can't just ditch your job on someone else. 
Today's workshop cleaning is you guys. Everyone's eyes were on her. The supervisor who hit Oliver crumpled his face, and the female supervisor folded her arms without losing to him. Everyone swallowed their saliva and stopped their breath, while Oliver had only one thought. When are you going to teach me black magic? The best recap. Our story continues. Oliver can no longer contain his curiosity and demands to know when he can learn more black magic. If you like this story, please consider to like and subscribe for future uploads. The male supervisor said with an arrogant tone. Why do you care? The female supervisor replied. I care because I'm the same supervisor as you. You can't have your own way. Ha! Huh. The same supervisor? Same supervisor? Ha! Huh. Yes! Same supervisor! The woman said without losing, but the atmosphere was terrible. Everyone looked worried as if the female supervisor had done something wrong. Oliver, who was not aware of the situation, couldn't understand what was going on. It looks like you don't have a grasp of the situation yet. Haven't you heard that I'll soon be a formal disciple? That's just a rumor. Just a rumor? I heard it from a formal disciple. If you don't believe in rumors, you can just check it with your own eyes. Soon, the male supervisor gathered black light in both hands. It was a pitifully small and unstable light compared to Joseph. Others, however, stepped back in fear. The female supervisor was the only one standing tall without flattering. It's for the master to decide who would become a formal disciple. What do you think the master will do if he gets to know that you're running wild without knowing your place? When Joseph's name came out, the heated atmosphere subsided a little. The male supervisor, who looked fierce like a bulldog, also made an uncomfortable expression, but he did not withdraw his hostility toward the female supervisor. Yes, that's right, it's up to the master to decide. I wonder how you'll behave at the end of this month when I officially become a formal disciple. Hey, what are you doing? Start cleaning up. The male supervisor ordered the workers to clean up. Then the workers began to move like a dog with its tail on fire. Oliver hid his presence as usual and got out of the mess. He would have normally disappeared quietly without getting noticed by anyone, but he didn't do it today. Instead of going away, he was waiting on one side for the female supervisor who helped him earlier to pass. The female supervisor was coming his way while talking to her fellow workers. Why did you do that, Marie? I'm sure that guy deserves it. Right. It's none of our business. Why did you poke your nose in it? I heard that that guy Tom is going to be a formal disciple this time. I'm pretty sure. You have a lot of grudges, Marie. Enough. Everybody be quiet. Nothing's for sure. It's just a rumor. I've been here for years. How many times do you think I've heard things like that? So stop it. Just give it a rest. Huh? Marie, the female supervisor, stopped walking. The reason was because she saw Oliver waiting for her. As if seeing something bothersome, Marie sighed deeply. Then she spoke coldly to Oliver. I just helped you because I didn't like that guy's behavior. I don't need your thank you. I didn't help you because you were pretty. Don't think about anything weird and go away. It's annoying. Oliver stood still with a blank look on his face. Marie asked again, frowning. What? Is there anything else you want to say? Oliver nodded. Yes. What is a formal disciple? What happened? At the study in the basement of the sausage factory. Joseph, who was reading a book there, asked a fairly handsome blonde man who looked like he was in his mid-twenties in front of him. The man's name was Andrew, Joseph's best student and the second in command of the Joseph family. There was a small disturbance at the factory. You know the guy you brought in the other day? He was beaten to death by Tom. Is he fine? Who are you asking? The one who got beat. Is it the boy I brought the other day? Yes, but not to the point of worrying. Marie helped him when he was about to get hit hard. Marie? That's surprising. It's none of her business. Why did she stand up for him? Isn't she the kind who can't stand unreasonable things? Plus, it might have irritated her seeing Tom acting high and mighty. You know, Tom's been an informal disciple for two years, while she's been A for six years, so she's probably nervous. Ah, I remember. The girl who's been an informal disciple for a long time. Hmm. I thought aspiration was as important as talent for black magic, but I guess not. Wait a little longer and if she doesn't show any results, downgrade her to a servant. Andrew, the formal disciple didn't bother to say anything, since it was the rule of this place, those who don't have any talent should serve those who have talent. Then, I'll get going. I'll report you if anything happens. After saying that Andrew didn't go out, he just stood still in the same place. Joseph, who saw his unusual behavior, asked. What? Are you not going out? Master, may I ask you a question? Tell me. Why do you want me to keep an eye on the kid you brought in? Didn't you put him in as an informal disciple because he wasn't very talented? Joseph said, covering the book he was reading. Why are you interested in that? Well, you've never done anything like this before, that's why. The ones master picked up as an informal disciple was taught once or twice by the master, and soon you've lost interest in them, but this time it seems different. And I'm your disciple. 
Andrew wanted to say, I'm am your disciple, so I deserve to know, but when he saw Joseph in his eyes, he was soon discouraged and blurted the end of his words. After seeing through Andrew's mind, Joseph opened his mouth like a benevolent teacher. Why? There's nothing much to it. It's just because he's pretty interesting. Interesting? Yeah. Unlike other kids, who want to learn black magic to gain strength or money, he just wants to learn black magic. Isn't he interesting? So, you mean he has some talent? Not some, he has quite a lot. Andrew's expression hardened noticeably when Joseph said that. Ha ha ha. Are you scared? Ugh. No. No master. Don't be so scared. That guy is just in his beginning stage, on the other hand, you've been my best student for years. So, don't worry about it, just train. Yes, master. Andrew was relieved when his teacher comforted him. As he was in a hurry to leave the study, in order to avoid showing his embarrassed face to his teacher, Joseph called Andrew. Wait, did I say Tom will be promoted to a formal disciple? Yes, you said last time, it will be officially announced at the end of this month. What's wrong, master? Well, Joseph didn't answer. Instead, he thought hard as if he had an interesting idea. Okay, it's been a while since I've come back, so it's not bad to show them mercy once. Andrew, let the informal disciples know. We're going to have a class in two days. Class? Andrew asked back in surprise. As he was in a hurry to leave the study, in order to avoid showing his embarrassed face to his teacher, Joseph called Andrew. Wait, did I say Tom will be promoted to a formal disciple? Yes, you said last time, it will be officially announced at the end of this month. What's wrong, master? Well, Joseph didn't answer. Instead, he thought hard as if he had an interesting idea. Okay, it's been a while since I've come back, so it's not bad to show them mercy once. Andrew, let the informal disciples know. We're going to have a class in two days. Class? Andrew asked back in surprise. Untalented informal disciples were also taught by Joseph, but only once every two or three months. When Joseph wasn't feeling well, they never received a class once in six months, so it was an unusual case to take a class soon after his return from the trip. Andrew asked, enduring the shock. Really, are you fine with this, master? It's okay. I'm going to promote one at the end of this month, so it's not bad to check everyone's skills one last time. Quote ellipsis ellipsis dot. So, we're just disciples, not real disciples. If you want to be a real disciple, you have to at least enter the low level of formal disciples. Do you understand? Oliver nodded to Marie's question. At first, it was hard to understand, but Marie's detailed explanation gave him a rough idea of what an informal disciple was and what a formal disciple was. To put it simply, an informal disciple is only a disciple in name, but in reality, they were not a disciple. Rather, they were a disciple candidate and a worker at the same time. They were not taught anything properly and had to take care of the chores, which came as quite a shock to Oliver. Working was not a problem. The real problem was that he couldn't learn black magic properly. That's the only thing Oliver was looking forward to. It was quite a big deal for Oliver. When Marie saw that, she said, Don't be so disappointed. Life is supposed to be unfair. Whether it was because of Marie's consolation, Oliver soon regained his spirits. On the surface, his face wasn't much different from when he was disappointed because of his corpse-like appearance. Then, how do I become a formal disciple? The guy named Tom said he was about to become a formal disciple. Marie frowned when the story of Tom came out. Combined with her fiery looking eyes and her purple hair, she looked angrier, but she spoke in a rather hysterical voice. Well, to be recognized as qualified to become at least low level of the formal disciple, you have to accumulate skills in the classes that's taken once every few months. Don't expect too much. It's not easy for an informal disciple to become a formal disciple, and the number of seats is limited, so it will take several years. It's not something, you, who has been here for only a week should be thinking about. What should I do to be recognized as qualified for becoming a formal disciple? Marie frowned. Didn't you hear me? Don't think about it. Ah, you have to know how to use the basics of black magic. Do you know Hate Bullet? Have you heard of Black Shield? Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. It's energy extracted from the soul, and it can take forms like a gun, a shield. It's way more powerful than guns. I happened to see it when the master picked me up. In an instant, he swept away the gangsters who had dominated my neighborhood. Marie made a complicated expression. Oliver could see her emotions mixed with admiration, greed, and nervousness, remembering that time. She, too, coveted black magic, but for some reason, she couldn't do it properly and she has become impatient. Marie pondered for a while, but soon came to her senses and jumped out of the seat. Ah, why am I explaining this to you? You are not my guy, and you didn't even bring anything. Ugh, what's your name? Oliver, I don't know what you were thinking about when asking me these questions, but this is the last time. I'm not free enough to answer your questions one by one. I'm giving you advice because you don't seem to know anything. If you want to get help from now on, at least bring something. 
There's no such thing as free in this world, okay? Oliver nodded his head. Marie didn't know whether Oliver understood it properly because he always had the same expression on his face, but Marie woke up saying it was no longer her business. Why the hell did I answer his question? Maybe I was possessed by that blank expression. Just as Marie was about to go back, a worker under Marie's supervision came running. Marie, Marie, I have good news. Good news. Oliver who stood next to Marie didn't care what she was so excited about and just stood there to listen to what she had got to say. What is it? Calm down and tell me. Surprise! Master will take a break from his work tomorrow and will be conducting a class. Can you believe it? Class? Normally, when he comes back from a trip, it usually takes four months to have the next class, right? Right. Why is this sudden change? Marie said, with a surprised look on her face. There has never been a case like this in the six years of her stay in this place. When Marie was in deep thoughts, Oliver cut in tactlessly. Do we have class tomorrow? Yes. That's a relief. Quote ellipsis dot dot. You're really lucky. The best recap. Our story continues. Oliver can no longer contain his curiosity and demands to know when he can learn more black magic. If you like this story, please consider to like and subscribe for future uploads. The male supervisor said with an arrogant tone. Why do you care? The female supervisor replied. I care because I'm the same supervisor as you. You can't have your own way. Ha! Huh. The same supervisor? Same supervisor? Ha! Huh. Yes! Same supervisor! The woman said without losing, but the atmosphere was terrible. Everyone looked worried as if the female supervisor had done something wrong. Oliver, who was not aware of the situation, couldn't understand what was going on. It looks like you don't have a grasp of the situation yet. Haven't you heard that I'll soon be a formal disciple? That's just a rumor. Just a rumor? I heard it from a formal disciple. If you don't believe in rumors, you can just check it with your own eyes. Soon, the male supervisor gathered black light in both hands. It was a pitifully small and unstable light compared to Joseph. Others, however, stepped back in fear. The female supervisor was the only one standing tall without flattering. It's for the master to decide who would become a formal disciple. What do you think the master will do if he gets to know that you're running wild without knowing your place? When Joseph's name came out, the heated atmosphere subsided a little. The male supervisor, who looked fierce like a bulldog, also made an uncomfortable expression, but he did not withdraw his hostility toward the female supervisor. Yes, that's right, it's up to the master to decide. I wonder how you'll behave at the end of this month when I officially become a formal disciple. Hey, what are you doing? Start cleaning up. The male supervisor ordered the workers to clean up. Then the workers began to move like a dog with its tail on fire. Oliver hid his presence as usual and got out of the mess. He would have normally disappeared quietly without getting noticed by anyone, but he didn't do it today. Instead of going away, he was waiting on one side for the female supervisor who helped him earlier to pass. The female supervisor was coming his way while talking to her fellow workers. Why did you do that, Marie? I'm sure that guy deserves it. Right. It's none of our business. Why did you poke your nose in it? I heard that that guy Tom is going to be a formal disciple this time. I'm pretty sure. You have a lot of grudges, Marie. Enough. Everybody be quiet. Nothing's for sure. It's just a rumor. I've been here for years. How many times do you think I've heard things like that? So stop it. Just give it a rest. Huh? Marie, the female supervisor, stopped walking. The reason was because she saw Oliver waiting for her. As if seeing something bothersome, Marie sighed deeply. Then she spoke coldly to Oliver. I just helped you because I didn't like that guy's behavior. I don't need your thank you. I didn't help you because you were pretty. Don't think about anything weird and go away. It's annoying. Oliver stood still with a blank look on his face. Marie asked again, frowning. What? Is there anything else you want to say? Oliver nodded. Yes. What is a formal disciple?
What happened? At the study in the basement of the sausage factory. Joseph, who was reading a book there, asked a fairly handsome blonde man who looked like he was in his mid-twenties in front of him. The man's name was Andrew, Joseph's best student and the second in command of the Joseph family. There was a small disturbance at the factory. You know the guy you brought in the other day? He was beaten to death by Tom. Is he fine? Who are you asking? The one who got beat. Is it the boy I brought the other day? Yes, but not to the point of worrying. Marie helped him when he was about to get hit hard. Marie? That's surprising. It's none of her business. Why did she stand up for him? Isn't she the kind who can't stand unreasonable things? Plus, it might have irritated her seeing Tom acting high and mighty. You know, Tom's been an informal disciple for two years, while she's been A for six years, so she's probably nervous. Ah, I remember. The girl who's been an informal disciple for a long time. Hmm. I thought aspiration was as important as talent for black magic, but I guess not. Wait a little longer and if she doesn't show any results, downgrade her to a servant. Andrew, the formal disciple didn't bother to say anything, since it was the rule of this place. Those who don't have any talent should serve those who have talent. Then, I'll get going. I'll report you if anything happens. After saying that Andrew didn't go out, he just stood still in the same place. Joseph, who saw his unusual behavior, asked. What? Are you not going out? Master, may I ask you a question? Tell me, why do you want me to keep an eye on the kid you brought in? Didn't you put him in as an informal disciple because he wasn't very talented? Joseph said, covering the book he was reading. Why are you interested in that? Well, you've never done anything like this before, that's why. The ones master picked up as an informal disciple was taught once or twice by the master, and soon you've lost interest in them, but this time it seems different. And I'm your disciple. Andrew wanted to say, I'm am your disciple, so I deserve to know, but when he saw Joseph in his eyes, he was soon discouraged and blurted the end of his words. After seeing through Andrew's mind, Joseph opened his mouth like a benevolent teacher. Why? There's nothing much to it. It's just because he's pretty interesting. Interesting? Yeah. Unlike other kids, who want to learn black magic to gain strength or money, he just wants to learn black magic. Isn't he interesting? So, you mean he has some talent? Not some, he has quite a lot. Andrew's expression hardened noticeably when Joseph said that. Ha ha ha. Are you scared? Ugh. No. No master. Don't be so scared. That guy is just in his beginning stage. On the other hand, you've been my best student for years. So, don't worry about it, just train. Yes, master. Andrew was relieved when his teacher comforted him. As he was in a hurry to leave the study, in order to avoid showing his embarrassed face to his teacher, Joseph called Andrew. Wait, did I say Tom will be promoted to a formal disciple? Yes, you said last time, it will be officially announced at the end of this month. What's wrong, master? Well, Joseph didn't answer. Instead, he thought hard as if he had an interesting idea. Okay, it's been a while since I've come back, so it's not bad to show them mercy once. Andrew, let the informal disciples know. We're going to have a class in two days. Class? Andrew asked back in surprise. It's basically a study on using emotions. To be precise, it's actually a study that deals with the soul, which is the foundation of human beings. Emotions are just some energy from the soul. Yes, black magic is essentially the study of dealing with the soul. Therefore, in addition to emotions, invisible human characteristics such as vitality and attractiveness can be extracted and used. Since the soul is the foundation of everything, black magic can be said to be the search for truth and fundamentals of human beings. Oh, oh. Everyone nodded in admiration and writes in their notebooks as if they understood. Oliver thought he was the only one who didn't understand. Well then, is there anyone who can tell me what is the foundation of black magic? Once again Marie raised her hand. Seeing emotions and handling them are the foundations of black magic. Yes, no matter how much knowledge you have, it's useless if you can't see and handle emotions. And what next? To become a warlock, you need to have the ability to extract the emotions and process them. That's right. That's the basics of the basics and it's the real first step. But it is also as difficult as it is. Why? Emotion is the energy of the soul. The moment you try to extract and process, it affects the warlock himself. Grief, anger, hatred. If the warlock is careless or lacks the ability, he or she can be affected by emotions and suffer damage. Yes. Black magic has the most destructive power and efficiency, but it's not without any risk. If the warlock's mental strength is weak or he lacks skills, he or she would be rather eaten by the emotion. Therefore, 
Black magic is the strongest magic only in theory, but there was no one who was able to reach it practically. The atmosphere became solemn for a moment. Everyone felt worried and scared that black magic was not that easy. Quote ellipsis ellipsis dot. So, we're just disciples, not real disciples. If you want to be a real disciple, you have to at least enter the low level of formal disciples. Do you understand? Oliver nodded to Marie's question. At first, it was hard to understand, but Marie's detailed explanation gave him a rough idea of what an informal disciple was and what a formal disciple was. To put it simply, an informal disciple is only a disciple in name, but in reality, they were not a disciple. Rather, they were a disciple candidate and a worker at the same time. They were not taught anything properly and had to take care of the chores, which came as quite a shock to Oliver. Working was not a problem. The real problem was that he couldn't learn black magic properly. That's the only thing Oliver was looking forward to. It was quite a big deal for Oliver. When Marie saw that, she said, Don't be so disappointed. Life is supposed to be unfair. Whether it was because of Marie's consolation, Oliver soon regained his spirits. On the surface, his face wasn't much different from when he was disappointed because of his corpse-like appearance. Then, how do I become a formal disciple? The guy named Tom said he was about to become a formal disciple. Marie frowned when the story of Tom came out. Combined with her fiery looking eyes and her purple hair, she looked angrier, but she spoke in a rather hysterical voice. Well, to be recognized as qualified to become at least low level of the formal disciple, you have to accumulate skills in the classes that's taken once every few months. Don't expect too much. It's not easy for an informal disciple to become a formal disciple, and the number of seats is limited, so it will take several years. It's not something, you, who has been here for only a week should be thinking about. What should I do to be recognized as qualified for becoming a formal disciple? Marie frowned. Didn't you hear me? Don't think about it. Ah, you have to know how to use the basics of black magic. Do you know Hate Bullet? Have you heard of Black Shield? Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. It's energy extracted from the soul, and it can take forms like a gun, a shield. It's way more powerful than guns. I happened to see it when the master picked me up. In an instant, he swept away the gangsters who had dominated my neighborhood. That's it for chapter 5. Like, if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you would like chapter 6. Leave a comment. What do you think of the story so far?